my heart and I'm seeking His righteousness. I want to, I want Jesus' righteousness and I also want to obey Him. And God is very happy and He will bless me and He will do the same to you also. So it's not very hard because God has given us promises. And then when we love God, He will give us all kinds of blessings, great blessings. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So for people who love God, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have, have entered into the heart of man the things that God will prepare for those who love Him. So when we love Him, God will prepare things we never imagined. Now what I'm doing now, I, I could never imagine in the past that I'm so happy now, I have all these blessings, I can bless people, I'm so happy. These are things beyond my imagination when we love Him. Now some people say, I cannot love God perfectly. Now God doesn't look for perfection. Of course we want to love God better, better, in a better way. But even when you are a beginner, you try to love God. What does love God mean? To be thankful to Him, to appreciate everything God has done for us, to love His presence, to desire Him, to worship Him, and to obey Him, and to do the things He wants us to do, and to serve Him. So these are ways that we love God. So when we love God, even when we try, we try to love God, we try to, to really put God in the first place in our lives, we try to bless other people, God is very happy with us. And He will bless us. He will strengthen us. He will um, give us more and more strength and power. And He will raise us up to a high level. So whenever we love God, God is very happy. So this is how we can motivate people. Because God has given us these promises. So from these verses, I'm telling you the promises of God. God has given us the promises. And God is happy and reward us for every little thing we sincerely do for Him. Mark 9.41 For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, assuredly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. So whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ. So here it explain in Matthew, whoever gives a little uh, 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 a cup of cold water to a little one, he will by no means lose his, his reward. It means giving to someone who belongs to Christ. So mainly this is doing to Christians. But we can also give to non-Christians to bring them to Jesus. That Jesus will also count and reward. So mainly we want to bless Christians and then we want to bless non-Christians to, to help them understand Jesus' salvation and to bring them into the salvation of Jesus. And so if someone gives you a cup of water because you belong to Jesus, that he will not lose his reward. So this is a promise that when we give to any Christian or to any non-Christian in order to bring them to Jesus, God is very happy and he'll reward us. So this is a promise of God for us to serve God gladly. And God rejoices over us. In Zephaniah 3.17, He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So it says here, God is very happy with us. God has all kinds of feeling toward us. He will take great delight in us. Now, now some people look at relationship with God as something just uh, of the mind. Now actually, our relationship with God should not be just of the mind. It should be from our heart, from our feelings. Because firstly, God has love for us from His feelings, not just His mind. He has feelings toward us. He takes great delight in us. He will quiet you, quiet us with His love like a mother quiet the baby. And He'll rejoice over us with singing. He will be very happy singing over us. He sings over us. So that is how God is happy with us. So if God is so happy with us, we should you know, also uh, be happy with Him that 
You know, the Bible says that, that we rejoice in God. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. That we rejoice in God. We're happy of all the things of God. It's not just the mind, but our feelings, our emotions, that we are happy with God. So here it promises that God has rejoices over us. Now let me let us look at these promises again. All these are promises, and the Bible has a lot of promises. Okay? That there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. Excuse me, let me. Okay, um, so one sinner repents, there will be more uh, joy over heaven. So that's a promise. Whenever we repent, God is very happy. And this promise that God, get, that God has given us a spirit of sonship. God doesn't give us a spirit of a slave. He wants us to, uh, to live as children, not as slaves. And then it's not hard to come close to God. When we come close to God, God is very happy and He will he'll, uh, bless us. And he will come, to, please, come close to us. And then when we abide in Him, He will abide in us and then we will bear much fruit. So He promises that He will be with us and bless us. And then uh, when we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, all these things will be given to us. And then God will give us blessings, great blessings that we can never imagine when we love Him. When we love Him, God is very, very happy. In Mark 91, uh, 941, that when we give a cup of water because someone belongs to Christ, God will for sure reward us. So whatever we do for God, even a cup of water, because that's, that's the easiest thing we can do. And God, Jesus tells us, it's not until you can bring someone to Christ. That is much harder. Even when we give, give a cup of water, God is very happy and re, re, will reward us. So it tells us that God is happy with every little thing we do. So this is a promise of God. And then He will take great delight in us. He's very happy with us. He rejoices over us with singing. So this is a promise of God. Whenever we trust in Him, we obey Him, uh, we serve Him. He is very happy with us. Okay. Now we need to understand unconditional grace and conditional grace. Unconditional grace, that means there is no condition. God planned to give us grace before we do anything. Before we became a Christian. God already has this plan. He already planned His salvation. And God moved in our heart before we do anything good. He moved in our heart to bring us to Jesus. And God has a wonderful plan in our lives. And God plans to bless before we do anything. These are unconditional grace. So God wants to bless everyone. That's unconditional grace. Conditional grace is when we obey God, He will reward us. So when we obey Him, He will reward us. When we trust in Him, He will reward us. When we love Him, He will bless us with blessings we can not imagine. When we come close to Him, He'll come close to us. These are conditional grace. That means when we trust in Him, when we obey Him. Now, these are the law. When we trust in Him, when we obey Him, He'll bless us. But even though that, that part is the law, the promise is the grace. When we trust in Him, this is law, then He will bless us. He'll bless us with His presence. He'll bless us with different kind of blessings. This is uh, grace. So He motivates us to obey Him by His grace. So that is something we should do all the time, to motivate people with grace, to motivate people to obey Him. So Christians should be loving God joyfully and freely and not under pressure. So when we see that God has given us so many promises, we should be loving God joyfully and freely and not under pressure. We'll say, wow, it's so good that it's not under pressure, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. 
Now, if we tell people you have to do this, do that, it actually, it doesn't make them more willing. It gives them more pressure. And uh, more pressure. Psalm 102, serve the Lord with gladness. God wants us to serve Him with gladness. For God loves a cheerful giver. When we give cheerfully, God is very happy. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly. So willingly, that we are serving God willingly. When we know God is happy, when we love and serve Him joyfully and freely, we have stronger motivation to love and serve Him. So when we know that God is happy when I willingly serve Him, when I willingly bless, uh, bless people, and when I willingly pray to God, God is very happy, and God will remember everything I do for Him, and He will reward me. Uh, now, because we started later today, so I'm not going to have the break because the uh, time is short now, and um, we have 45 minutes more, and then um, it, you know, I, I want to go until uh, one o'clock. Uh, it's 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock in uh, in Kenya. Okay, so it's 45 minutes from now. Okay, some Christians just tell others what to do without telling God's grace and promises. So this is something I say we should not do. Now, it's okay to say we have to repent, but we will say when you repent, God is happy with you. Actually, I avoid to use the word have to. Instead, I'll say repent and God will be very happy with you. I avoid using the word have to or must. Instead of telling people you must repent, I'll say when you repent, God is very happy with you and bless you. And if you don't repent, you have to face your own sin. Now, I still was warn them, but I would say in a way that if you don't repent, you have to face a, the consequence of your sin. So I, uh, I do use the law, but I use the law in a way not to pressure people, but I tell them the consequences. When you love God, God is very happy. But if you don't love God, that there is warning. Instead of saying you must love God. So some people teach like this. They, and they also, they also use a very loud voice. You have to pray. You have to pray. You have to do this, do that. And so it's, it's giving pressure to people. Instead, you know, instead of saying you have to pray and read the Bible, I would say when you pray, God is very happy and God will bless you. So I hope you learn this way. Don't just say you have to pray, but we say when you pray, God is very happy. He will listen to you. He will come to you. He will bless you. He will give you fruits. You bear fruit and He will be happy with you and He will bless you more. So that is how we motivate people with God's grace. And then we motivate people to read the Bible and we say, the Bible is full of the treasure of God. When you read the Bible, you understand the promises of God, you understand the treasure of God, and you receive all these blessings and promises. And some people will say, you know, I'm saying don't do this. Don't just tell people what to do without telling them grace. Some people just say, you have to love God and love people. So it's just saying, you have to, have to love God. But we tell them, you love God, God is very happy with you, and He'll give you blessings that you can never imagine. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human heart cannot think of the blessings that God will prepare for you when you love God. So that's wonderful. And then if you don't love God, that Paul did say that a cursed is him who doesn't love God. There, there's bad consequences, so we don't want to not to love God. So we can warn people, but we want to motivate people more with God's grace. Let me ask you this. Do you change because someone yells at you all the time and say, you have to this, do this, do that? Or because someone loves you and cares about you? Are you changed more easily by someone who loves you or change easily by someone yell at you? Now, if someone yells at you, you might change at that moment, but you might change back later. Yelling at people doesn't really change a person totally. And then some people say you have to support the church, you have to do offering, 
you know, instead we'll say when you give offering, your money will be stored in heaven and God will be very happy and God will reward you and God will give you all kinds of uh, rewards. He will reward you richly. Like I offer my offering to God and God has blessed me richly. I thank God for that. And then some people say, you have to do evangelism. Instead, we'll say, when you do evangelism to save people, God is very happy and God will give you strength. God will give you strength and wisdom to do evangelism. And when you do evangelism, God will bless you and He will use you and He will uh, use you to bless more people and, uh, and God will reward you. So if we just tell people what to do and say have to and must do, then people think that Christianity is all about obeying rules. Now many people think that Christianity is all about rules. They, they think, well, when I believe in Jesus, there are promises. But later, it's all rules, all obeying. And then they might not obey God joyfully. Instead, you know, now I have the mo strong motivation to obey God, but not under pressure. But I'm saying, whatever I do for God, God is very happy. Whatever I do to bless people, God is very happy and God will reward me richly. So I'm very happy to serve God. I'm happy to spend the rest of my life to do everything for God until I die. Even on the day I die, I still want to bless whoever comes to me. That's how my mentality is because I know that is something God is very happy with. Now some people even motivate others to change by criticism. This is worse than just telling them you have to do this by criticism without telling them God's grace and promises. We always want to tell people God's grace and promises and we don't want to motivate people with criticism. And some people will just say, you have not prayed much, you don't pray much, you don't have a heart to pray. That is criticism. Instead we'll say, whenever you concentrate to pray, you put your heart to pray, you love God, you desire God, God is very happy with you and He'll bless you. Now some people will say, is that true? Even when the person just beginning to learn to pray? It's true because that's what the Bible says. Now even, of course, you know, people who have a strong relationship with God, they pray, there'll be stronger results. But even a little child who prays, he can God can still bless him. So he doesn't have to be a mature Christian to be blessed by God. Any Christians, even when they are a young Christian or a weak Christian, when he start to trust in God and say, Lord, I need you. I depend on you. I appreciate you. I thank you. And God is very happy. And some people do it by criticism, saying you have not repented of your sins and God is punishing you and you still have sinned and God has punished you. Now, we can say that to people, but in this way, okay? When you repent of your sin, God is very happy and He'll forgive you and He'll bless you. And when you don't repent, you have to face the consequences of your sin. Can you face your con the consequences of your sin? It's terrible to face the consequences of our sin. So, please repent. If not, you have to face the consequences of your sin. It's terrible. So, Explaining to people instead of saying, you didn't repent, you're not a repentant person. Or saying, you don't have love for God, you're not a good Christian. So those are not good things to say to people. Instead, we can say, when you try to love God, God is very happy and God will bless you more and more. And even when you're a weak Christian, you start to change today, you try, try to improve today, God is very happy with you. Anything. Anything you do to improve, God is very happy with you. Now, when people criticize others, then people just think of their shortcomings and think that it's hard to please God. So we don't want to say that it's hard to please God. When people are pushed to obey the law, to obey by the law, they might feel bitter toward the teacher. They will say, oh, the teacher is always telling me what to do, what to do, and then they don't like the teaching. And they might be bitter toward God and the Bible. They say, oh, God is giving me a lot of pressure and the Bible is just telling me what to do. Now, the Bible just doesn't just tell people what to do. The Bible does give us a lot of promises. So they would, some Christians are bitter toward God because they didn't see the blessings of God. But we want to see the blessings of God everywhere. 
We see God's blessing in creation, in His work, in our lives, how He draw us to believe in Jesus, how He give us peace and forgiveness, how He motivate us to love Him, how He changes our life, how He give us strength and joy and uh, to help other people. Whenever, whenever we help someone to believe in Jesus, we feel joyful because God is happy with us. So whatever we do, we can see God is rewarding us. So then we'll say, all these good things that should motivate us to obey Him and love Him, and He'll bless us. Okay, now when people are pushed to obey by the law, they think that they are forced to obey. They think they are forced to obey. They have to obey. They will feel guilty when they cannot do it well enough. They feel very guilty. And then to obey and serve God becomes a burden. They will say, I have to spend so much time praying every day. I have to spend so much time reading the Bible. I have to spend so much time doing things for God. Then they are under pressure. Now, I spend a long time serving God. I spend a long time writing. But I don't feel pressure. I feel happy. Because I know God is very happy with me doing that. And I know that God has given me wisdom and, and um, motivation and strength to, to serve Him. So I'm very happy to serve Him. Even when I serve a long time, I don't get bored. Even when I pray for a long time, I don't get bored. And then when people are pushed to obey by the law, then it's hard for them to enjoy Christian life and enjoy serving God. Then it's very hard to say, rejoice in the Lord. They will say, oh, I cannot rejoice in the Lord. It's all pressure. It's all doing a lot of work. So we should not be pushing people to obey, but we motivate people and then people would want to obey willingly. Now, if you have any question, you can send to me and... Um, uh, because you know at first we say we have one and a half hours but now we have half now more and then you have your lunch so I'm going to continue but if you have questions <clears throat> you can send to me now and then I will respond to the que questions first <clears throat> yeah. okay if not we'll continue <clears throat> now the next point is that um, <clears throat> now some people will say if you just motivate people with grace God's grace and some people will take advantage of God's grace they will just be lazy they will continue to sin and they say if I repent God will forgive me so they say it won't change people that's not true let me tell you when we motivate people with God's grace we also tell them the law but it's very important to understand that the proportion of grace is much higher. Okay? We talk about God's grace more. And the reminder from the law and the warning from the law should be less. Okay? For instance, you know, me, when I'm serving God, most of the time I'm thinking, when I serve God, God is very happy with me and God will bless me, God will give me strength and God will open a way for me to bless more people. That is how I'm motivating myself. Motivating by the law is saying, if I don't obey, God will punish me. But I, I'm not, you know, I don't tell myself, if I don't serve God, God will punish me. I, but I know that in my heart. If I don't serve God, God can, you know, it can bring bad consequences that I don't, you know, I don't use the talents that God has given me. But that's not my main motivation. I'm not, I'm not telling myself, oh, if I don't do this, then God will punish me and there will be bad consequences. Mainly, I'll say, when I love God, God is very, very happy. And God will bless me and God will give me strength. God will open the ways for me. So, mainly, I'm motivated by God's grace. But I also keep in mind God's law. We need to tell people God's law and warnings. But we don't have to spend as much time on warnings. And Christians should not be thinking about the warnings all the time. Now some people say, oh, some Christians are like animals. They don't obey. You have to whip them. 
you have to punish them, yell at them, and then they obey. Now, if they're like that, they, you know, their obedience is not pleasing to God because they're under pressure and then they will do it. But if we say, God is so full of blessings. God is full of love for us. He cares for us. He creates us. He prepares all these things for us. He works in our heart to change our life. He does all these things. He has done so much, so much. And then when you obey Him in any way, He is very happy and bless you. So you should obey. And then when you obey, God is very happy. When you serve God, God is very happy. And then when we don't use the talents God has given us, we don't serve God, then there can be bad, bad consequences. Or when we sin, there will be bad consequences. So we should warn people, but it should not be the main thrust, the main content in a message. We don't have to spend most of the time yelling at people, you are not you are lazy, God doesn't like you, God will punish you, this year He'll punish you. We don't have to do that. We tell them, when you trust in God and start to love God, start to serve God, God is very happy with you and He'll bless your life and you'll see more and more blessings. At the same time, we realize that when we sin, there will be bad consequences. So we can warn people, but the warning should not be the main part of our message. Okay, we should have reminder and warning from God's law. Sins are destructive. The Bible does say sins are destructive. But the law should not be the main motivation. The law should not be the main motivation. The mo main motivation should be God's grace. God loves me. God cares about me. And anything I do for Him, He's very happy. Now, we don't want to be proud. We dare not become proud. Even though when we do something good for God, God is very happy, we should not be proud. And we should not compare with other people. When The moment we are proud, God is unhappy. But we just say, it's God's grace that I can serve God today. It's God's grace that I'm alive today and I can serve God. That is God's grace. So we should be motivated by God's grace. At the same time, we have the reminder from the law. So here are some verses that has the reminder from the law. God's law does give us motivation and warning, but it should not be the main motivation. It should not be the main motivation. It should be. Now for me, it's like 1%. 99% of me is motivated by God's grace, or even 99.999%. 0. 0. 0.0001% is motivation by the law. But some people who doesn't, some people who don't repent, they might need more law to remind them. But still we want to put more grace into their lives. Galatians 6, 8 For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap this uh, corruption or destruction. So when people sow to the flesh, sow to the sinful nature, they will reap corruption or destruction. Destruction will come to their life. The family will be broken down. The, uh, the ministry will be broken down. The relationship with, uh, uh, with God will be broken. It, it will hurt the relationship with God. And then John 5, 14, Jesus says, Sin no more, lest a worse thing come, uh, comes to you, come upon you. So don't sin anymore because terrible things can come to you. Worse, the worst thing can come to you. Matthew 25, 45, Inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me, and this will go away into everlasting punishment. So here it talks about the goats. That uh, Matthew 25, the third parable, is about the parable of the sheep and the goats. And then when it talks about that, when Jesus descend in His glory, He will divide all people as a shepherd divide the sheep and the goats. The sheep will be on his right side, the goats on the left side. The sheep had done the good things to the little brother of Jesus, and the goats have not done it to, the, to them. And then it's as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me, and this will go away into eternal punishment. So those people who don't obey God can go enter eternal punishment. 
Now we are not saved by law. We are not saved by obeying God. We are saved by grace through faith. But when we are saved, our Christ our Christian life will bear fruit. Real Christian will bear fruit. We want to bless other Christians. But if a Christian never bless any other Christian, never do any good things to other Christians, then there might be something wrong with their faith, and they might not be saved. So this is the warning. So serving God is not an option. Serving God is not an option. We all should serve God. If a Christian doesn't serve God at all, he doesn't do the good things to the little brothers of Jesus. He does not do it to them. Then he will. He can go into eternal 